we live in a second. Good uh, morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 362. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, with us today we have uh, Masataki Wasa and Tim Kappa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's um, a, a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. He resides in Wimbledon, a suburb of London. Tim Kappa uh, uh, is also pretty close to London, about 100 k's north, 100 uh, miles north, I should say. And um, he... Uh, is um, the CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, Tim's also a Google product expert uh, on the Google My Business uh, community. We have seven questions tonight. Um, the first one um, is titled, uh, Wanting uh, to uh, Change the Permalink, permalink Structure. Um, and it's from no, the, the Nomad Sam. Um, he said, would you expect any impact uh, from changing the permalink structure from domain slash category slash post to domain slash post in a, a live site? Has anyone done this before? I'm currently getting about 50 to 20K traffic a month wanting to change permalink structure so we can use a hierarchy plugin that is not compatible with the uh, uh, current um, permalink uh, structure. Hmm. So my thing is like Molak said if it's not broken don't fix it um the other bit is you said you wanted to use like a hierarchy plugin well if you were going to go down this road i would actually uh, fix it uh properly rather than change change that and then use then rely on a plugin you know if you were going to fix it uh, fix fix the whole thing properly with um, with uh, categories, products, um, things like that. Um, I, I would rather use it. I would rather do it properly if you were going to go down that and then not have to mess about with a plugin. Um, but it goes back to if it ain't broken, don't fix it. You know. Um, you don't necessarily have to have these things um, to be able to create a hierarchy, you know, interlinking between um, products and perceived category landing pages uh, can also work. Um, I've, I did that with a, I don't even know what kind of site. <laughs> I don't even know how or why they tried to, you know, build it like this, but essentially everything is on a single URL. Um, there is zero structure to it, but you are able to still create the, create the understanding for search, search, uh, you know, to search engines um, with internal linking between products and what should be the category, um, et cetera. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, okay, if there's no more, we can move on to the next. Number two was from Jude Tannery. Um, it's titled, Will Google Ads Improve My Search Engine Results by Ads Position? Jude went on to say, I'm wondering if I invest in Google Ads for a few weeks slash months. Uh, do you think it will help to improve my search engine results page position in the long run? Uh, 
Um, we're going to... Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Um, let me finish the, the question. I was toying with this idea of uh, using this method to give me my ranking a, a little boost up there, but I'm not sure how effective that will be for such an investment. Um, has anyone had the same experience? Thank you for your valuable input. So it won't. So take it out of your head straight away that it's uh, that you know it it will help in your search results. The minute you stop paying, you disappear. But it is it is good to obviously use ads. You know, I mean, um, as long as you set it up correctly and you are very, you know, you, you tightly control your, your location, who, who, who you're targeting, etc. Um, to start having some kind of presence whilst you're working on your, you know, your organic, um, you know, whilst you whilst you're working on your organic, uh, building up your organic visibility. So certainly it can help you then. It won't help push up anything else, but it can certainly help you to generate uh, other leads or sales whilst you're working on your organic. Uh, in terms of uh, invest money into backlinks, yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go down that road. I'd invest money in some really great resources, content uh, for your site. Good one, Tim. I totally agree with you. Okay, um, let's um, move on um, to number three on our list. We've uh, only got seven today, um, so we're nearly halfway through. Um, Didier Ryder asked a question titled Listing both as hotel and restaurant in Google My Business. Um, Didier said, hi everyone, I'm a social media manager for a hotel and restaurant. I'm looking into their uh, Google My Business. Uh, if I correctly understand the situation, you can either be listed as a restaurant with the uh, call to action book a table or as a, uh, uh, as a hotel with the call to action book a room, but not both. If the uh, Google reviews are either restaurant or hotel orientated. Um, however, we want to highlight both and not just one or the other. Uh, how do we do that? What um, would you uh, advise me to do? So you've been misinformed. So um, you can have your hotel. You can, if you have a restaurant uh, within the hotel um, that's open to the public, of course, that can be listed. If you have two restaurants, that can be listed. If you have a spa that is open to the public also, uh, that can be listed. Um, if you have a theatre um, in, in there, that can be listed. So as long as it has um, its own access, a camp, you know, and it's open to the public through the, 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 the hours that you've done, you can have them both or all of them. Um, you, yeah, I would have, I would have both uh, hotels. Firstly, um, very limited with what you can do. You can literally do nothing uh, with the GMB listing um, for hotels. Uh, you can't add posts, you can't add a business description you can't um you, you there's you, you, well you pretty much can't do anything with it apart from add images um oh they allow you a service section now so you can say oh we offer 24-hour room service or you know but you can also do that in your attributes um the just so you're aware the actual booking facility on the on a hotel it comes through via API for your um, OTAs. Um, you you have no control over that. If you're listed with any OTAs, um, th their API feeds Google, which then populates that. You can list your own prices in that carousel, 
But remember, you have to use hotel ads for that, and you're still bidding on uh, room commissions. Um, so you're still paying for yourself for your own room to appear within the booking tab for hotels. Um, with uh, restaurants, certainly you can use, obviously because it's a restaurant and it's not in a, in a lodging category, you have full use of everything, you know, traditional GMB. So you can use posts and that. And what we typically do with um, other hotels is obviously apart from daily specials or weekly specials or, you know, uh, posts and stuff like that, we also cross pop, uh, you know, cross push. So if you're doing a uh, fine dining weekend, you know, that's perfect. It makes sense. You can actually um, cross promote from the restaurant to, you know, with, with, with an actual hotel's uh, internal URL, not just to the restaurant, um, but it makes, you know, you can, you can cross promote and, and, it, and it works pretty well, especially when it's, you know, themed. Um, there's no point, um, you know, this weekend's uh, room special on, on the restaurant because people are typically looking for the restaurant and they see a room special, they're not, they, they don't, re it doesn't really convert. But certainly themed stuff you can cross promote on your restaurant. And don't stop there, you know, if you've got a spa that's open at the spa, um, you know, that can also have a GMB page, um, which you can same again, then use um, the post cross promote. What you, what you will also want to do at some point um, is once these are up and running, I find it very beneficial, especially for the user, um, because if a hotel is, you know, 15 stories or whatever, and you're on the, you know, the restaurants on like the top floor, or the middle floor, wherever, um, it's always helpful to, you can contact, you can't set it in your GMB results, uh, sorry, in your, in your GMB dashboard, but if you contact business support, they can add the label located in. So the restaurant will have the restaurant's name. And then there's a little marker below it, located in, and it lists the hotel's name. And you can do that for your spa, for example, it'll say located in. But you have to contact support for that little, uh, the located in marker. Um, and it's always helpful and easy for, for, for people. Um, so yeah. That's, that's about it. Thank you, Tim. That's a brilliant answer. All right, let's um, go to the next on our run list, which is uh, from Shayo Chaya Blow. Um, it's titled, Should I Set Up a Different Google Search Console Accounts for Each Language? Uh, um, Shayo said, um, should I set up different Google search concept for each language directory? Um, he said, hi, uh, recently I found one of my clients has several uh, Google search console accounts for each language dash region directory. Um, I understand it will be easier to manage. Uh, however, I wonder if this is a good practice compared to just setting up one Google search console account. Um, for the uh, whole uh, domain. Uh, are there any pros and, and or cons uh, for either of them? Let me know your thoughts or experiences. Thanks. Um. I haven't done uh, purely because we only have we've only have certain portions of the site uh, which is in a different language. But I'm assuming if your entire site is in a, is 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 on also on another language page, whether it be on a domain um, or on a. Hmm. If it's on another domain, certainly, why not? But if it's on the same domain with just like a forward slash, you know, CN or whatever, denoting the language in between the, the, the actual URL, 
Uh, don't I don't think you can. Can you? I don't know. I'm out of my depth with this one. I haven't I've, I haven't had um, any experience with it. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let, let's let's uh, move on to the next. We can't win them all. Um, it's from E. Dita Martin. It's titled "How Can I Stru Structure the Product Title." He says, my Google FU is, is, is running low at the moment. Um, um, I'm searching for some um, ideas which uh, on, on what should go into product titles for a WooCommerce store. Regrets is what I would say. Um, the store is selling uh, custom widgets uh, exclusively. The customizing is done by certain artists who are well known to the collectors uh, of custom widgets. The widgets are made of specific materials, have various optional parts and certain uh, embellishments. How can I structure the product titles? Uh, something like this. Um, and he um, gives some examples, um, which can be seen on, on the uh, Dumb Messier Questions Facebook group. Uh, and he's, uh, Edith Martin has these questions. He said, should I attach the store, na store name uh, to the page title? Every single title contains custom widget and it is redundant, but the random visitor doesn't know that we are selling widgets. Should I have product IDs or SKUs uh, in the e, in the title. So no, so like I'm not an e-commerce specialist or anything like this. But the way I, I would I would kind of work this off the top of my head is the artist, I'm guessing, is your main draw because you're selling custom widgets by artists. So that artist should have their own category page. So Bobby Brown would be a category. Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown's custom widgets. That would be his thing. And then there would be um, Jane, Jane, Ludlow custom widgets, etc., etc. Then those products of theirs would be uh, products within each category. Um, now the title off the top of my head would be Bobby Brown's custom widgets. Um, buy now, buy online, or whatever your tagline would be, and then your your brand name. The product itself. I would probably, you know, whatever the kind of widget is, like I said in the thing, pink diamond widget, hyphen, reminding them it's a Bobby Brown custom widget at ABC Widgets. Now, with the embellishments and things, I was thinking that depending on the quantity that you had of these embellishments, you could actually create um, subcategories um, subcategories for those embellishments. If there are, if there, if there's not a lot of them which don't match up, then you could use tags, uh, product tags, to 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 um, group them those different embellishments together. So if the embellishment was like I don't know. Zirconium, <laughs> zirconium diamond crust. Um, but if, like, literally, there was loads of people using the zirconium diamond crust, um, that may warrant its own category, and then all of those would also be in a sub in, in its in its own subcategory. Uh, if there was only a handful across 
the site that used it, you could use a product tag, and then that would at least tag those for the, for the user. Um, that's how I'd probably look at it, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't go past this one without uh, thanking Michael Martinez and uh, uh, all of the other people who answer questions uh, through the week. Um, and um, I, 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 I'm torn between uh, reading out Michael's whole answer, which is a good one. Um, anyway, we'll move on to the next and um, another question from Shao Chia Lo. Um, starts off. Uh, just read this. Uh, if in, in some case I cannot uh, automate uh, a sitemap on the back end brackets. Clients are not able to coordinate with the web dev team, etc. Um, will crawler-generated sitemaps be uh, the uh, second best option? Um, is there any legitimate reason to do so? Since I know uh, some uh, search engine uh, optimizers still do, do still do this. Um, are they just doing it for the heck of it? Or maybe there uh, is uh, some reason uh, behind it. Uh, or in this case, uh, is it better to just not include an XML uh, sitemap at all? Uh, let me know your thoughts or experiences. Thank you. So generating your own Generating your own, depending on the size, can be a bit of a pain in the ass, and especially every time you update or change anything, and you need to remember to update that. Total pain in the ass, and I don't know why some some sites just can't generate. Um, however, I, I must admit, um, I came across a site where same again, had to be updated, then they updated to HTTPS, and then the developers couldn't get their heads around, and um, I just thought there's no way I'm going to sit and maintain, you know, this for them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> we uh, removed the old sitemap, uh, which of course hadn't been updated in forever. And I literally haven't seen... Um, I literally haven't seen any any drop uh, in in any crawl or anything like that. But I will say a little caveat there is we make sure that robots txt with you know we're using that effectively to tell so, uh, search engines what not to waste time on where they don't need to go right. Um, but. You know, if it's a massive site, I think it is always valuable to have a site map, but you need to be aware that it's going to need to be updated all the time um, if the development team can't figure that out. Um, so those are your things. In my personal experience, uh, quite a large uh, B2B uh, site I think a hundred thousand URLs, different, you know, products, brochures, blah 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 blah. Um, we never saw a, when when we when we uh, removed it. I never noticed any um, negative downside to to not. But then again, Google already kind of knew the site, and it's not like things change rapidly or drastically. So that could be the other flip side. If the site was just launching, well, that's another story. Yeah. Okay. Will we call this one covered? And again, another brilliant answer from uh, 
Michael Martinez, it, it can be read in, in person on the Dan Messier Questions Facebook group. This one is from uh, Eli uh, per Perienti um, on how to rank high on Google Maps. Um, Eli said, uh, hi guys, new here and will try to give my input uh, every time I can. Uh, he said, I have a question. I'm trying to rank multiple Google My Business uh, entries for a company which has uh, a few uh, ATM machines. Um, I imagine that's automatic teller machines um, in uh, different locations. Would you create citations from the same website uh, to these different locations? What other way can you get them to rank high on Google Maps? Thank you. Well, the first the first thing that you know I would suggest is that wait, you're not going to create citations for ATM machines. I don't think any decent any decent uh, directory is ever going to allow for an ATM machine. I don't even think they have categories for ATM machines. You know, it's for businesses. Um, so the way I would do that, so the way I would work on this is you have uh, location pages for your ATMs, where they're located, directions to them, um, obviously customer support numbers, uh, on there um, for those you know for your for your location for your location pages uh, then you could also yeah well, I mean I think the best thing there would be location pages for the ATM um, if they're in store you could ask the actual store um, for a link to your location page if they are in a um super uh, shopping mall um shopping malls always have a facilities page you just send them across the link for the uh, for your location page and look there we go you know we've created that it's got custom information if something goes wrong with the uh, atm machine and that would be useful for your customers. Um, so all of a sudden, you 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 you, you know you're building uh, natural links in the locations to those location pages. Um, but yeah, I don't think citations. Honestly, I, I I don't know of any directories that would accept a non-business. Um, but your first thing is you're certainly going to need location pages for each. I would include directions into it, make it really useful to the consumer and especially your customer support telephone numbers. Yep. Thank you, Tim. Well, I, I was just a bit surprised. I look, I typed in ATM on Google Maps and they do seem to have listings. No, the ATMs can, but what I'm saying is citations ah, like okay. on Yell. You're not got, you know, like, yeah. I don't even know how you would class it, you know. So I thought there used to be sort of um, just ATM, just um, sign on the map, which you couldn't click or you know it wouldn't trigger any sort of um, entry. But now it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can certainly create them, but that's the thing. Um, oh, and on your location page, embed obviously the the map from your for, from the GMB listing. Um, Okay, all right. I know when I click this button, um, it's going to say thank you for watching. Um, and so it's that time again. We've answered the, uh, all of the questions asked on the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week to do this uh, 
all again, but before we go, I, I must thank people like Michael Martinez, Rob Watts, um, and all of the people that um, take the trouble to answer questions through the week uh, and, and make uh, our group uh, such a, a valuable resource. Um, and I especially thank uh, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, for um, being here tonight, and uh, uh, David Razam and um, Michael Fisher Kirshner, um, Rob Mars, uh, they were here last week and hopefully we'll see them uh, here next week. But until then, um, it's good night and, and thank you uh, for uh, watching. Okay. <laughs>